What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today we continue our Lenten devotion through the Treasury of Daily Prayers by focusing on the Word of God and the faith of our fathers. Stick around. <music> So for this Thursday after Ash Wednesday, we're continuing our devotion by looking to the Word of God during the season of Lent and looking at it through the lens of the faithful cloud of witnesses that has gone before us. So we continue, actually, with the Gospel of Mark, where we left off from yesterday, and we have a reading from the Lutheran Reformers from the Solid Declaration of the Formula of Concord. Let's begin. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 28. Jesus begins his ministry. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, and they were fishermen, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boats mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with their hired servants and followed him. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Our writing for this meditation on the Thursday after Ash Wednesday comes to us from the solid declaration of the Formula of Concord. When we see this disagreement clearly, we note that it has been caused chiefly by this. The term gospel is not always used and understood in one and the same sense. It is used in two ways in the Holy Scriptures, and also by ancient and modern church teachers. Sometimes it is used to mean the entire doctrine of Christ our Lord, which he proclaimed in his ministry on earth and commanded to be proclaimed in the New Testament. Therefore, this includes the explanation of the law and the proclamation of the forgiveness favor and grace of God. Therefore, this includes the explanation of the law and the proclamation of the favor and grace of God, his heavenly Father. For it is written, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark 1.1. 1, 1. And shortly afterward, the chief points are stated, repentance and forgiveness of sins. So when Christ, after his resurrection, commanded the apostles to proclaim the gospel to the whole creation, Mark 16.15, he compressed the sum of this doctrine into a few words. He also says, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Luke 24, 46-47. Paul, too, calls his entire doctrine the gospel, Acts 20, 21. He summarizes this doctrine under two points, repentance toward God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. In this sense, the general definition of the word gospel, when used in a wide sense and without the proper distinction between the law and the gospel, is correctly said to be a preaching of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. For John, Christ, and the apostles began their preaching with repentance and explained and taught not only the gracious promise of the forgiveness of sins, but also God's law. Furthermore, the term gospel is used in another way. In its proper sense, gospel does not mean the preaching of repentance, but only the preaching of God's grace. This follows directly after the preaching of repentance, as Christ says, repent and believe the gospel. Mark 1, 15. 
so when it comes to preaching, yes, we are to proclaim repentance. We are to proclaim the law, and we can do that from what is called the gospel, the gospel of Matthew, the gospel of Mark, the gospel of Luke, the gospel of John. But the gospel, properly defined, is a promise to be believed. Repent, yes, and believe the gospel. What glorious good news, we pray. Lord Jesus, Holy One of God, you showed that the kingdom of God had come by your healing the sick and casting out demons. Heal us in body and soul by the medicine of immortality, your body and blood, that we may truly be your disciples. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Until next time, may God richly bless you with the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.